call Mr. Burr's matter. Council is not present via Zoom or in person. Ms. Shad Ms. Shadwick, if I'm going to allow video, you cannot sit there and be distracting to the court. So just be still. If you weren't calling my case, you said. I understand. That means okay. that. You cannot sit there in you front of the go back to the you can okay if you want okay. to go back there and i'll wait for you to the case and that's fine thank you all right back to mr burr um could you what's your understanding this, this was on for a proof period uh a spring device that we requested any more argument on that uh there is no proof that has been filed uh, the city, uh, therefore, is requesting a bench warrant in the amount of $1,500 for failure to comply with court order. Has, has uh, counsel, defense counsel, been in communication with you regarding this matter? Absolutely not, Your Honor. I see here this matter was set on March the 4th on a case that I noticed dated just a moment. Uh, this was on the um, jail video calendar. I do recall that um, <clears throat> because I released Mr. Burr on that case that I noticed for him to appear here today on uh, a status check on the admission interlock. However, um, he indicated he did not um, wish to have admission interlock and rather to be um, have the SCRAM um, device uh, for alcohol monitoring. The city is asking what? For a bench warrant in the amount of $1,500 for failure to comply with the court order. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's do this. Just a moment. Let's take a look at my calendar. What I'm inclined to do is. Today is March 14th. Um, oh, we have a Michael Teo calendar tomorrow, is that correct? Yeah. I'd like, um, Madam Clerk, um, I'm going to hold off on your request. Uh, I know Defense Counsel is appearing uh, tomorrow's calendar. Um, I'm going to continue to tomorrow, first of all, uh, for two issues. Number one, show cause why Defense Counsel is not present. Um, on behalf of his client, because his client's not present. And then number two, um, to show cause on uh, why the court should not take action on um, Mr. Uh, Burr's non-appearance and or failure to comply with the pretrial conditions. we we'll continue to tomorrow. What time, counsel? That, cal that calendar is at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Yes, 9 o'clock. Um, can you make a courtesy call to the defense counsel then? Thank you. All right, that concludes this matter. Next is uh, Ms. Shaplick. You have three class numbers. Good morning, come on forward. It is 20 2359 PA. Oh, just one second. I'm almost there. I'm just can saying the class again? number 20 2441 PA and 20 2675 PA. And Your Honor, I would request that this note be allowed to be on. That the Zoom be allowed to be on during my hearing. What is the basis for that request? Um, because I feel that you're closing the courtroom. Uh, if, if, the, if there are people that are expecting to be from far, for example, if they can't make it or for some other reason, and they've been accommodating the Zoom, um, without notice, it's not proper to just turn it off. All right, your objection is noted. It's on visual and audio record. Um, under the uh, case law, this I am not closing the courtroom. The courtroom is open. The door is open. Anyone can walk in. The court is not obligated to provide more than one method of open courtroom. All right, are you ready to proceed with your matters? Your three case numbers. Are you asking? Yes. 
And then I'll be trying to say it for it. Yes, I'm here for okay. safe. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, sure. Okay. Just a moment. I, I do need counsel, Your Honor. I don't want to go forward without counsel. So That's very clear, and I made that very clear already. So here's how, um, here's, that is exactly the topic of this hearing, is um, the right to assistance of counsel. So we're going to talk about that. I've read um, the pleadings that you filed and the pleadings that the city has filed. And the pleadings I'm referring to uh, filed by Ms. Shavlik. It's March 7, 2022. And the pleadings the city's response is March 11, 2022. What's the name of those documents, please? The March 7 yes. board document is titled in the caption, Motion to dismiss for failure to provide legal counsel to the defendant under CRRLJ, that's the criminal rules, not the civil rules, 3.1 subsection 1, subsection 2, subsection 4, subsection E. The other document I'm referring to that the city filed, oh, and you filed a note for motion, for a motion, note for motion calendar on March the 8th, um, to the city of Sultan, Zachary and Thomas, and to the clerk of the above entitled court, and you specified the nature of the motion, is motion to dismiss, and then you referenced in the statement of facts, C, motion. So this is the motion that you also noted for today, as pursuant to your note. The document I'm referring to in terms of the city's response, filed on March 11th, is titled Response to Defendant's Motion to Dismiss for Failure to Provide Counsel. All right, so this is a hearing about subject of counsel, and I referenced that at the last hearing uh, where um, Mr. Ehrlich uh, filed a response, uh, filed a motion, excuse me, to withdraw, and um, that issue was discussed in the court made its decision. I had um, specifically pointed out in terms of right to assistance of counsel is that um, I uh, instructed the parties to make legal arguments and invited, uh, is a better term, the parties to uh, make legal arguments with respect to the issue of uh, waiver of counsel or forfeit right to counsel. So those two issues. And um, so let's proceed in that manner. Ms. Chavlik, you indicated that at this hearing, you would like assistance of counsel. And you believe- It's not just at this hearing. It was at the other hearing. You actually violated my rights by not appointing a new attorney. Um, your order to do that. So when you remove an attorney, you must also rep, uh, renew the representation. You, um, you're somehow giving the prosecutor advantage over me by saying that she doesn't have to file any motions, that this, we are here today on a response, which is to a motion that you already granted. So it's the, whatever phony baloney we're doing here today is, I don't understand it, um, you ordered me to respond as a pro se litigant without um, proper counsel. You're violating Gideon versus Wainwright. I asked you at the other hearing that I wanted to not proceed without counsel. You said that you didn't need to, you, you weren't going to, you weren't going to extend the hearing. You weren't going to um, give me a new trial date, you weren't going to give me any time to get any counsel, and you also ordered me to respond to a response that was already mooted by your order removing my attorney. And you violated my rights by not appointing me a new attorney so that I may be re represented by a lawyer um, in this criminal trial and a criminal defense on my behalf. You're violating getting versus Wainwright. Now, I looked at the law because in um, Judge Wynn's order, um, he cited the laws about 
the judge's obligation and the protection of the accused. And each time, you have removed my attorney. You have failed to appoint a new attorney without vetting them at the very next hearing. So what's really happening here is you are a part of violating my rights, and you're a part of the prosecution trying to um, force me to litigation, and not litigation, my apologies, to be criminally prosecuted without an attorney. Now, I'll tell you how I say that. Each time an attorney is um, uh, withdrawn off the case, you have to reappoint a new attorney. Um, each time they come and appear before you, the very first time, they must be vetted. And you ask them, hey, are you uh, qualified to represent Ms. Shavlik? Are you, is there any conflicts? Um, is, is, um, is there any foreseeable issues with um, you representing Ms. Shavlik? There's been several of these attorneys. Um, I'll say, let's start with Walter Wagner. Uh, I, I don't know his approximate age, but I'm going to guess he was about 89, 90 years old. He did not have a law license. He was on, um, what do you call that? Um, where you, where uh, he's kind of retired. His law is his. It's not active. It's an inactive status. He did not have legal insurance. And he told me that he doesn't understand why the court appointed him because he hasn't been practicing law in over 20 years. So, I mean, that's the kind of attorney that was appointed to me without my knowledge, without my permission, and um, was never vetted by the court. That's number one example. Um, number two example is Jay Neff. And Jay Neff was appointed by um, Don Hain and the prosecutor made communication during the court hearing asking who is going to be appointed to Ms. Shavik. So the prosecutor, Zachary Thomas, gets to pick my defense attorney and tells the court clerk, without the judge's knowledge, that um, she wants Jane F. to be my attorney. So Jane F. Um, is actually employed with the Snohomish County. He's actually a commissioner downstairs working with the people who issued the order that I'm being criminally prosecuted for, pros for violating. Um, uh, so that Jay Neff was never vetted. Um, in each of these instances, um, Amy Truia and all these other different attorneys that were appointed were never vetted by the court to make sure that that was uh, not a conflict for them or for me. Um, so I feel that the court participated in um, the harm that's come to my defense. Um, I also feel that the influence from the prosecutor having um, and putting the pressure on someone that really has no business being my defense counsel with the conflicts. Um, I, I, uh, I, I have been harmed by this court. And I have also been ordered to respond pro se without an attorney, and um, I, that, that to me is very egregious. That shows me that you are biased against me. That shows you me that you have treated me differently. Um, that has shown me that you should not be on this trial. You should not be hearing any of these cases. The extreme prejudice that you have shown against me is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, can't even believe it. It's, it's like we're in another country or something, like somewhere where they don't have any um, rights. They just get in a line and they go to the jail. You know, you're done. You're, you don't have any defense. You don't have anything. You just go straight to jail because we don't like you. We don't like your activity. We don't like what you do. Uh, we want you to go to jail. So uh, being a part of that, um, I feel that it's also very outrageous that the prosecutor has filed a response to a motion and now you've turned it into, you, you've already signed the motion for the motion to withdraw for Daniel Ehrlich. You removed him off my representation. However, you failed to file a, note, a, a signed order allowing me to seek other counsel or anything. Um, because there's no 
There was no order that you signed removing Daniel off my case. However, orally in court, you removed him. And on the case docket, you removed him. But you're still restricting my movement as far as a defense by not signing an order um, removing him off of the case. I'm not sure why you didn't sign an order. Um, I think the reason may be that he filed this motion. The motion was already granted. And now you use that motion, the motion to withdraw, to make both of these parties appear here today in, a re in replying to a response that's moot. Okay? And um, so I would say that you, Your Honor, cannot waive my rights to a counsel representing me in a criminal defense. Um, and I also do not waive my right to have a fair defense that is able to provide a defense. And in no way did I have any responsibility over the people who you chose to represent me that were not legally allowed to represent me and were actually shocked that you did represent, that you ordered them to represent me. Um, so I, and then you asked my lawyer, Daniel Ehrlich, to speak bad things about me so that you can have a reason why you're gonna blame me that you picked up the wrong attorney that didn't, that was never vetted. Um, so I would say that in my motion, or not my motion, um, in my court-ordered um, response, I want you to know that I am not capable of responding to the prosecutor's response without a defense counsel. I demand a defense counsel. I have the right to a defense counsel. And I'm asking this court, um, number one, that they should be uh, dismissing these charges against me immediately, that I've already been violated, um, that I have not been, I have not received proper defense. And um, for the furtherance of justice, um, this case should be uh, dismissed immediately. Do you have a request, Ms. Shaflik, with respect to how the court should proceed on uh, appointment of counsel? Well, um, I, I have thought about that. Um, and I think that the fair and just thing would do would be that the prosecution have nothing to do with my appointment. Um, it's a conflict of interest that the prosecution shouldn't pick who defends who they're attacking. Um, it, it has an integrity issue. Um, I would say that the, um, there's already been a letter from the Office of Public Defense stating that they will not defend me um, because of a conflict. Um, they did not, however, address assigning a conflict attorney from the Office of Public Defense. Um, I think when you're using an Office of Public Defense, there's some kind of a buffer that makes it so that there is an appearance of fairness, that someone isn't selecting hand-picked defense that may go the other way in a benefit financially, such as a payment from the city of Sultan. Um, in any other fashion, I would have no problem having a, a regular defense um, that's not chosen by the, the prosecution or the plaintiff in this case, and that's, that's how I feel it would be fair. Um, I'm not asking you to give me a rocket scientist or something that's um, the best lawyer in the state. I'm not asking for anything like that. I just want something that is going to be the appearance of fairness and that we make sure that the attorney is actually able and capable of defending me. Um, and whether or not um, I'm responsible for providing uh, the, the documents and the case files and actually giving him the guidance on how to defend me. Because uh, when Daniel said that I didn't give him any documents, I'm thinking in my mind, how is somebody that's not a lawyer expected to provide uh, maybe 
5,000 papers to uh, a defense attorney when I go to the front counter and ask for a copy of my file and they say it's going to be umpteen thousand dollars because they're, they're going to charge me 15 cents a page for having any kind of copy or record of my file. Um, this case has been since June 12th of 2020. Um, the original case numbers that you're calling off, the 22359, 22441, 22675, those case numbers were associated with a domestic violence protection order application that was never signed. The, the, um, the arraignment in that case uh, did not happen until October 19, 2020, almost eight months after I was charged with three uh, uh, non-existent crimes. Um, the city of Sultan doesn't have the authority to prosecute under um, those crime numbers. Um, when you look at the anti-harassment order that they're saying I violated, it has a 7.21 um, warning on it in the front page that says, um, if I violate that order, I will, have, I will be in contempt of court. And that contempt would be in front of the judge that ordered that ordered uh, that protect, uh, anti-harassment order. Um, instead of doing that, they forum shop and go to the Evergreen District Court, apply for a uh, domestic violence protection order. Um, now they have a cause number that they now have separated and severed the cases so that you have an order here and criminal charges here, and they're not connected in any way as far as um, that you, both the hands are not knowing what they're doing. And it's maliciously been over three years that I've been having to defend a domestic violence protection order violation by a lawful conduct of providing email service to the plaintiff. And I was ordered by the court in the, for, in the hearing to provide a copy to the other party. Both of us were pro se. She emailed me on May 4th. Hey, I'm pro se. Here's the court documents for the hearing coming up in five days. I respond, here's your court papers. That's it, three times. Because she sent me back a message, message again saying something about she didn't open it. Now, I mean, a lawful purpose is not a violation of an entire anti-harassment order, and if it was, it needs to go back before the court who ordered the order. Um, because you're, she's interpreting the order, and you're interpreting the order, but it's not what it says. That's not what the law says. And the order, the just one more, the very last thing. Oh, I, I'm just gonna tell you, you have two minutes, you wrap up your argument. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the order that I'm being charged with, um, 9A, 46080 is a violation of an anti-protection order and all of the statements made by Officer Peter Suoso, he claims that he arrested me in the city of Sultan. He never, I was never arrested. I was never in the city of Sultan. And I've asked for documents and proof of the pictures that he had took. And I asked for the cell phone records and I asked for all these documents. I come back and I find out that Peter Sosa is selling his home and he's moving off to Florida. He's no longer employed with the county. I, I learned that Jolene Joby was arrested for kicking somebody in the face and is in a domestic violence situation. Um, and this is the person who is accusing me of being violent where I've never been arrested or accused of hitting or assaulting somebody ever. And um, the the originating anti-harassment order was because my son had visitation on Friday and he asked me to take the children to a, a matchup for wrestling. I took them there. She came over and took the kids from me and the cops came. The cops said, give her the kids back. I got the kids back. And then she goes into court and lies and says, I interfered with their child exchange. There was no child exchange. So the whole deal of this anti-harassment order if you ask what the course of conduct was, there was no course of conduct that was in violation of anybody else's rights. Um, I did not do anything to hurt anybody or threaten anybody in any way. 
I exercised my right as a grandma and took my grandkids somewhere, and um, and then the, and then the accusal of these three charges. Um, now we're having this prosecutor who's maliciously coming after me, um, making some egregious attempts to come after me through using other courts, using other case numbers, using other crime numbers. And the 9A4680 says in the law that, they, that the order that I'm accused of violating shall have the description that I will be arrested. And it does not. If you look at the anti-harassment order that they're accusing me of violating, Ms. Shadlick, your time is up. But I do have a question for you, and this will be my last question, and I'll turn to the city for a response, if they wish to uh, respond. In the event that the court does not um, appoint you a lawyer, um, do you intend to hire your own attorney? <coughs> Um, I am not going to answer that without counsel. Okay, thank you, Michelle. City, uh, as I indicated at outset, I read um, your response, your pleading. Do you have anything you want to highlight or you want to uh, respond to and then I'll make a decision? Okay, the city will uh, refer you back to our response to uh, Mr. Erlich's motion to withdraw, in which we requested that upon his withdrawal, that the proper record was made, that the court ruled that Ms. Shadlow had forfeited her right to counsel. And we do want to highlight a couple and clarify a couple pieces as she is here pro se. The first of which is that uh, while she has cited Union versus Wainwright, there are limits, and those are listed forth in the cases that we um, have cited in that briefing, which we know she saw because she was given a copy of it the last time we were here in court. Uh, there is, one of the things we will notice, there's no constitutional right to a hybrid representation under state versus duties. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? There is no... Counsel, are you relying on your briefing? Yes. Do you lie to me on the yes. briefing that was filed on February the 25th? In the response? In our response to Mr. Erwin's motion to withdraw, we believed that today's hearing was an opportunity for Ms. Shadlow to respond to that briefing. The motion is new. In, uh, the second part, the city's position for the second part of our request is not new because Mr. Because now, what do we do now that Mr. Erwin has withdrawn? And the city's position is that due to her conduct, Ms. Shadlow has forfeited her right to counsel. And in the alternative, she must be advised that her continued regulatory conduct cannot continue. She is to continue to receive that. Again, we are going to highlight the um, motion that under State versus DeWeese, there is no right to a hybrid representation because it has been reflected in the record by both Mr. by several counsel that Ms. and Ms. Shavlik has done so here today. Uh, she uh, appears to want to be co-counsel. She has made arguments. Motions have been granted uh, when on May the 24th when Pro Tem was when a Pro Tem was here and Mr. Neff was late. Ms. Shadley made a motion to consolidate the cases. The city's motion to reconsider those is still being uh, has been continued as we have gone through council and those they have reviewed that. Uh, we will also note that uh, multiple attorneys, specifically Mr. Neff, Ms. Tr Ms. Trua, and Mr. Ehrlich uh, made similar record of the uh, communication or lack thereof with Ms. Shadlow. We do not want to know what that communication was. We do not want to interfere with who her attorney is. For clarification again, the email she's referring to between Ms. Hain and myself was only after we were both trying to hear Pro Tem win the city did not request Mr. Neff be appointed. The city has never made any request for a specific attorney to be appointed. Those have all come from the court based on who has a contract with the city of Sultan. I think it is uh, important that Ms. Shallow understand that based because she has indicated that she will have uh, a problem and feel it is prejudicial 
that anyone who is hired by the city of Salton represents her, when actually that is how a contract for public defense works. So if and that's false, I would object. So here, here's where, okay. Ms. Shelley, you made arguments, the city is making arguments, and I'm allowed to say make argument. You have- I'm just objecting, Your Honor. I, I understand. Okay. You disagree, okay? I'm making my so, objection noted. Okay. So I, 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 you can make a standing objection that you pretty much disagree with everything that the city states. But um, specifically, we will note that um, Mr. Neff was um, appointed by uh, the pro tem when the defendant on the record indicated she didn't want any snow coat a public defender attorney and he specifically made the record that he appointed Mr. Neff because he knew of no association that Mr. Neff had had with that office. As for the perceived conflicts, your honors are in rule on that. Uh, we will note that uh, we believe Ms. Shadler's math is uh, an error as it pertains to Mr. Wagner. I don't believe he's not practiced in 20 years. I think it's closer to two. But the city is not claiming that she, there was conduct that would warrant forfeiture. As it relates to him, we are not alleging that there was conduct as it relates to the Snohomish County Public Defender's Office. Their office simply doesn't have a contract with the City of Sultan to provide these services. We are, we did base our motion on the testimony and the written uh, basis that uh, Council Neff, Council Trua, and Council Erwick made. But, uh, and as it relates to her inability to defend herself, uh, the city will note that Ms. Uh, Shalit has just before the court made a very articulate reason of her defense. That's that the defense. Is, the is, the uh, Issues she raised, she previously raised while she was a pro se defendant in the city, in, when this case was still before the division in South. Uh, pro Tem uh, David Razuna, after her briefing and after argument, made very uh, pointed questions to the city. Um, so, uh, my, and, uh, we will just note uh, one more time, uh, Ms. Shallow is not being prosecuted for a violation of domestic violence and the protection order, as she is well aware, in August of 2020, the city amended those filings of those complaints. What she was arraigned on is the same three cases for which she faces now. But uh, we have no objection to the continuation of this trial date as she to look to hire an attorney or to proceed pro se, uh, knowing that she uh, is a very diligent litigant who wants to protect the record in this case. So we have uh, confirmed with our officers the availability going forward. We want this matter resolved, but we, we, have, we, we don't want to choose her counsel. We just believe that at this point, she's forfeited her right to one. Take a brief recess. Um, may I respond, please? No, I'm going to make a decision, Ms. Shalik. You have 15 minutes. To okay, she minutes. said a whole bunch of stuff that I am not allowed to respond to. Is that correct? Well, you disagree with her. No, I want to specifically make a note of the reason I disagree so that you may consider that prior to ruling. All right, I will. You have uh, three minutes. Thank you. Um, she just admitted that I'm not being prosecuted for a domestic violence protection order. Is that correct? I heard that. Um, the police reports all say domestic violence protection order. Um, all of the charges that are against me say domestic violence protection order. None of them say anti-harassment violation. Um, the law is very, very different from a domestic violence protection order versus an anti-harassment order. Um, the anti-harassment order is to be um, heard in front of the court that ordered it. Um, the domestic violence protection order is criminal matter. Um, they have different codes. They have different um, 
um, bail amounts. They have it's a whole different ball of game of the anti-harassment under 1014. That chapter is alone by itself for a reason. And um, a criminal action, uh, the 9A4680, is basically when you've already had a domestic violence protection order and you violate it. There has never been a domestic violence protection order for me to violate. In all of the, in all of the officers' um, records, they refer to a crime that does not exist. Um, therefore, I'm asking again for this, these uh, <laughs> criminal charges that are not uh, proper to be dismissed immediately uh, to protect the, the judicial system. And also, I have never waived my right to a counsel, and I have never, um, I, she makes statements that I have conduct, but there's no conduct. I want, there's no description, there's no date, there's no description of what I did wrong, in her opinion, um, to forfeit my right to a constitutional right. Um, the dilatory conduct, I mean, she can make up words all she wants, but I have not heard her say what I did. Um, I demand and exercise my right to a defense counsel, and therefore, that is not something that you can take away if you don't like the, the way that I defend myself. I, I never, this court has put me in positions where I am left without counsel, and I am required to be here, or I'll go to jail, um, and therefore, she can say that uh, all she wants, that I presented a record, but that doesn't mean that I choose to, and the prosecution shouldn't have the choice to take away my attorney, and neither should the judge. It is a constitutional right, and I have not heard any conduct in which I did that deserves any um, removal of my counsel. Um, the relationship between me and my attorney was never vetted, and therefore it should not be considered um, when it, the JNF was working for the Snohomish County, Truya was uh, has a contract and is being paid by the city of Sultan. And Ehrlich works daily with your brother-in-law, Judge Apple, and you, your sister, works at Dawson Place. All this stuff is um, in, in a very bad light to looking like you're attacking me through removing my counsel. Um, I have never tried to be co-counsel. I tried to make sure that um, the lawyer who's coming in my defense doesn't waive my right to a speedy trial. Um, and the office, uh, the court, if you remember, the court has ordered me to come here today. I have not asked to come here and represent myself. I was ordered to. Um, this is not a voluntary, um, I choose to be my own defense. Um, I have been ordered to come on a response. Um, and I think that covers what, what she was trying to say, but the domestic violence order, if she's claiming now that I'm not being charged with the domestic violence order, um, maybe this court should ought to um, vet her with what exactly is I did wrong.
court is now in session. Self-representation, the consequences, the risks that involve, 
And then number two, it will be of significance following my decision. What is a forfeiture? A forfeiture is a loss of right regardless of an individual's knowledge thereof and irrespective of whether the defendant intended to relinquish the right. That is the definition, those are the definitions that are set forth in the case law. I want to turn to the findings regarding appointment of counsels on city of Sultan cases. It's very similar to appointment of counsels for other cities. There is a list of attorneys who wants to contract with the various cities. In this particular case, the city of Sultan. It may be city of Mount Lake Terrace. It may be city of uh, maybe the city of uh, Mill Creek. But these are attorneys who, and they are voluntary, right? Because it's a contract. Vo contract is what? Is a voluntary decision on both parties to come in agreement in terms of the terms of the contract. So these are the cities who say, city, I want to be on the contract list, and here are the terms. The court is not privy to those contract terms because that's between the attorney and the respective city. There is a list of conflict counsel. Okay. Um, the list that conflict counsel, and this list are routinely given to defendants who the city of Sultan have filed charges. Okay. And this list contains contact information for counsel and uh, Miss Amy Trua is on there. Okay. The court cannot appoint an attorney who is un, who is not on the conflict counsel list to represent a defendant. May I, I want to be in that list? Yes. Yes. Okay, because you gave me the list for the uh, Snohomish County Office of Public Defense. When in my decision I refer to something, that, is, that something is necessarily made part of the record. So the list, for instance, I just referred to it. So that list will be made part of the record. And you can have a copy of it. Um, the first attorney was a direct appointment by the judge pro tem Wynn. Okay. Typically, in, in giving this list, okay, an appointment of lawyers, a defendant has to be, has to meet the financial eligibility requirements. I am not going to go back and revisit the circumstances leading up to Judge Wynn's appointment of Mr. Neff. Okay? So attorney Neff was your lawyer. Okay. By then, okay, you had already filed Ms. Shevlik multiple motions before then, before attorney Neff came aboard. You know, this case has multiple files. I believe it's between 10 or 12, and they are anywhere from three to four inches thick. And these are pleadings that are filed. And at that time of the appointment, Judge Wynn had indicated, you are instructed to contact Attorney Neff. Okay? And Attorney Neff did appear on your behalf, as so did you at hearings, um, on, to present arguments on the motions that had been previously filed. And that was on May 24th, 2021. Um, I presided over that hearing. And Attorney Neff, I'm going to make a finding that he made very little arguments on the motions that you had filed pro se. In fact, it was presented to the court as an officer of the court by an attorney that Mr. Neff indicated that those motions had very li little to no merit. And therefore, as an officer of the court, he cannot make arguments 
Otherwise, it would violate his rules of professional conduct. I'm going to find that. If the court did also instruct Attorney Neff and the city prosecuting attorney to get together and go over and come to an understanding of the voluminous record in this case. That will assist the orderly proceeding moving forward. And it, and it is so that Attorney Neff can um, catch up because he's, he just became your lawyer. And the court has an interest in making sure that this case proceeds in a timely manner. And that was the vehicle. Um, Attorney Neff indicated that he was not ready for trial. He needed to review more. Um, and on the hearing that the, your first attorney moved to withdraw, the court um, listened, and Attorney Neff made statements, and they listened to uh, all the parties involved. And I'm going to make findings that the motion to withdraw was on the basis that he was unable to represent you any further. Due was that because of his employment with Snohomish County? Due to Ms. Shavlik, do not interrupt me because I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. Because he was unable to represent you due to your insistence on filing motions that he would not file in terms of being meritless. Being, I'm making a finding that the communication, there's been a breakdown because of lack of assistance and uncooperative in preparation of the case, rendering the attorney-client relationship untenable and unworkable. Um, talking, leading to, um, so therefore, the court granted attorney Neff to withdraw. The court finds it significant that during the period of time that attorney Neff withdrew and to the next hearing that you had filed multiple pro se motions and wanted it to be heard. This, I will make an end. It is reasonable inference to draw on the fact that it goes back to my previous, what I alluded so far as that. On the one hand, you had conduct, you had made statements that you want a lawyer to represent you. But on the other hand, the conduct of filing multiple motions, whether it be motions for a locker appeal, motion to compel witness interviews, motion to compel subpoenas, motion to stay proceedings, motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdictions. These are pro se motions. So they are inconsistent with your statements to the court that you want representation. I believe at that time I was not ordered a new attorney after you took Neff away. On that August, me Ms. without an Ms. attorney. Shavlik, I know you continue to disagree with my findings, but let me continue well, with my it's findings. It's not correct. It's not correct that you, you just. You I'm not going to argue away. with you, Ms. Shavlik. I need to continue with my list. findings. I understand. I'm just noting for the record that I was attorneyless when you said that I filed those motions. You did not reappoint an attorney. I should I'm going to continue with my. I'm going to. I'm going to warn you the last time. I need to continue with my findings. You have a standing objection that you disagree with my findings. I didn't say that. August said 6, that. On August 16th, you then, as a pro se, because Attorney Neff had already withdrew, Thank that you. you want specifically to have Ms. Laura Schaefer appointed. Uh, I had indicated that that is not how the appointment works, is that defendants gets a choice of choosing. And I don't believe Ms. Schaefer was on the list. I could be wrong on that. But I said, okay, let's do this. I want you to have a, because you insisted on the lawyer, so that go down an Office of Public Defense. Um, the Office of Public Defense does not appoint lawyers to defendants who are being prosecuted by the city attorney, prosecuting attorney's office. And that is supported by um, Mr. Schwartz's um, filings with the court notifying and such. 
Okay. Therefore, the court looked at the list and knew that Ms. Truett was on the list, so I appointed you to have Ms. Truett on August 18, 2021. Um, on September 20th, 2021, Ms. Truett withdrew as an attorney. Um, the basis for that is very similarly to Attorney Neff, but there's an additional component, is that um, lack of communication and um, cooperation, uh, rendering the attorney-client um, relationship to be unworkable, um, the um, threats to file um, and refer to the attorney to um, Washington State Bar Association, which is very similar to the motion that you filed, pro se, on December 18th, 2020, where you filed a motion to refer an attorney to the Washington State Bar Association. Um, Was that yours? And, it, and therefore, the court then appointed attorney number three, which is Walt Wagner. When I made that appointment, it was at the urging and the reference of the city prosecuting attorney, believing that Mr. Wagner was on the list. I had Ms. Shavlik, please don't interrupt. I, that was a suggestion. Um, I did not believe Mr. Wagner was on the list, but I defer to counsel because um, uh, there, have been times, there have been times when counsel has more information than I do, uh, better information, more recent information. So I appointed Attorney Wagner, and uh, Attorney Wagner um, indicated that he was not taking direct appointment cases. Uh, so therefore, he moved, he noted up a motion and withdrew on October 4th, 2020. The, the period of time of appointment of Mr. Wagner and the period of time that he withdrew, I do, uh, it's not, I was not made aware that that lapse in time um, pose any prejudicial issues regarding how your case proceeds. Speedy trial. There, therefore, I will consider uh, Attorney Ehrlich as the number three attorney representing you if we discount Mr. Wagner. And that was appointed on October 26, 2021. Um, Attorney Ehrlich then filed a note motion to be and that was uh, uh, to withdraw and that was noted and heard that here on February 28th. On the same basis the court makes a finding that the motion to withdraw was again insisting on filing frivolous motions, uncooperative and working on the case and again threats to report the attorney to the bar rendering the attorney client uh, relationship unworkable and untenable. Um, so two findings is that throughout the history, procedural history of the case, Ms. Shavlik has indicated that she wants to have a lawyer either, but there are times that she's going to proceed with pro se, but reserve having a lawyer at the same time. Um, then file multiple, multiple motions, pro se. Um, I'm going to make a finding on half basis and then there's an inference that you really don't have an intention to have a lawyer represent you. Um, or, and or, at the very, at or, uh, that you disagree so much with your lawyer in terms of how to proceed that you insisted on an approach where your the lawyer is forced to be in a position where he or she either violates his F, the rules of professional conduct or to represent you. Um, the court concludes that 
um, you have forfeited your right to have the assistance of counsel. So that is um, my decision in this matter. That leads us to the case that I notice as Shavlik and the city that uh, has this uh, well, it says trial confirmation on March 15th. Um, either both parties can make a request to uh, make a decision on the court dates today so you don't have to come back tomorrow. Uh, and a trial is currently scheduled. The term starts on March 23rd at 8.30. So Ms. Shavlik, what, what is your um, position on the court dates that I just indicated to you on the case setting notice entered on February 28th, 2022? Um, I want an attorney and I have not forfeited my right. I think that your prejudice against me is extreme. And if you are gonna force me to trial, which I've already been warned by other people in the community, that that's how you bully people. Um, I am not prepared to go on the 23rd. I'm not prepared because you kept me preoccupied with either being with an attorney or not being with the attorney, blocking me from getting discoveries, blocking me from um, doing anything in my defense when you remove my attorney for months at a time, leaving me pro se. Um, you ignore those kinds of things. So I would say that I, I am saying that I am not ready for anything other than asking the Supreme Court for assistance, um, maybe the federal Supreme Court, um, exposing what you're doing, asking for emergency stay, um, for a writ, a mandamus, someone who's gonna be a little bit more unprejudiced than you are to order you to stop harassing me and ordering me to, that I removed my rights from me because you guys removed my attorneys from me without reappointing a new attorney. Um, so in short, I'm not ready for trial. Okay, case setting notice, city. Sarah Lynn asked, um, city uh, would perceive that in light of um, Ms. Shadow's intentions and the work that needs to be done, we have no objection to the continuance. Uh, we believe that normal course would be appropriate. So whatever that date would be, to allow her the opportunity to make these pleadings and or to find counsel. Okay. All right, so uh, the only question the court posed is that what is Ms. Shelby's position on the uh, court dates? Uh, and um, the, I'm hearing that Ms. Shelby would like to postpone her court dates the court is uh, not going to, and I've done this in previous hearings, is that um, I don't really speak to, to the um, statements leading up to your ultimate position on your on the ultimate of a question that the court posed to you. Um, my silence on that does not mean uh, anything other than I only have one question to pose to you, and what is your position on the court dates? So continuance is granted. Finding good cause, excluded period. What are those court dates, Madam Clerk? And that we are setting in the normal course, and then I will try, turn to the parties to try to accommodate your scheduling because you may have conflicts on those dates. Uh, May 24th, Your Honor, and June 1st. So May 24th is the pretrial. At what time, Madam Clerk? And then that will set the jury trial on June 1st term, uh, second and third at 8.30. And either party have any scheduling conflicts that you know of right now um, with those dates, uh, city? City has no known conflicts and in anticipation we have already confirmed uh, certain witnesses for the June 1st trial date. Okay. Ms. Shelley, do you have any known uh, conflict um, as of today? that you're aware of with those court dates? I'm not prepared to know. I need to look at my schedule. Okay. So uh, as of today, you don't know of 
but if it becomes that you know you have a scheduling conflict, um, work with a, a, a contact counsel um, because you are pro se right now and see if uh, there may be a discussion. You don't have to discuss, but that is entirely up to you. So I will put on this case setting notice at 9 o'clock on May 24th is your first required appearance. And then jury term starts on June 1st, 2020 at 8.30. Continue to follow all previously imposed conditions of uh, release. And I'm going to hand this to Madam Clerk. Then we can sign it and then take a copy of it. The court will enter. Um, I also and Ms. Shadley, um, you had reference a um, uh, an order that the uh, court uh, entered uh, in terms of withdrawing, uh, um, granting Mr. Ehrlich's motion to withdraw. Um, I'm not in to, going to enter an order to that effect uh, because the record already reflects what it was there was a motion and there was a proposed order. Are you saying that you're not going to sign the proposed order? I don't recall. I may be mistaken. There was a proposed order. 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 I, I if, have it. If you have one that um, Council Ehrlich proposed, then I... It's in our file as well, Your Honor. It's okay. right here. All right. When Council proposes an order, Madam Clerk, you want to go ahead and take that? Or either party proposes an order, I generally accept the proposed order, make amendments as necessary, and then sign it. Is that what the city's understanding as well? Oh, all right. Yes. Uh, I believe Mr. Ehrlich did exclude one at the end of his briefing. Uh, okay, then that was the court's oversight. Then I will sign the order and non pro tongue it on the date that I had orally granted it. Um, I think you should sign it the did did day. The day's day today, because that would be forgery if you signed it a different date, unless you acknowledged on the document that it wasn't really the date you signed it. I'll give this back to you, Ms. Shadlake. I will. Um, I, I appreciate your position. So the document that I will enter today gets a filing stamp on it, and then the date that I put on that document is my signature. Give, relates back to the date I entered the motion. Uh, granted the motion. Excuse me. Anything else in the city? I, not on this matter. Uh, I will make a record today. Uh, I've been in contact with Mr. Messinger about our other case on the calendar. I withdraw my request for that. Uh, he will be here tomorrow with the client. For the other matter, it was the first one. I wanted to just make them. Oh, I did it's on the calendar, Council, so we'll, we'll address it uh, on the okay. later then. So we'll be here tomorrow. Pardon me? We'll be here tomorrow. No, no, you have a new case setting notice. So the uh, March 15th date is stricken, right? Because that's the court date is one of the previous case setting notice. The case setting notice dated today are your new court dates. Is also March 23rd stricken? Yes, yes. Okay, that wasn't clear, and I don't think that that was on this order. Um, Next, do you have a copy of the case setting notice? Also, can you please address the motion that you didn't sign? Because I, I think you guys started talking, but I was distracted. Okay, um, I'll, I'll repeat what I said in case you missed it. Well, I just specifically so, want to know if you're going to sign that order. I am. I'm going to sign the order. That the order I'm signing today. Okay, I get to date my own order, right? And I'm going to not pro tongue it. Relates back to the That's date I. Ms. Shavlik, I'm answering my question. Uh, I'm answering your question. Okay, the day that I granted the motion, and then the document itself gets a filing stamp of today. That's okay. Any uh, anything else? Thank you. We're in recess. Can I get a copy of that? Can I get a copy of that, Your Honor? Yes, you can get a copy of it. I don't know if I can find. The copy that's in the file that Mr. Ehrlich proposed, if I cannot find it, okay, I'm going to contact Mr. Ehrlich at Clarkwell and have them forward me a, a, the same proposed order. 
Because I didn't see it, but I may have missed it. And I gave then, it to you. Did you not get it? I'm not going to take your copy, Ms. Shabbat. That's oh. your copy. Okay. Thank you.